and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of the, the valley, near the hill of Mori. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to, to the army, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gil Gil Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. Thank you once again. Thank you once again. God is too good this morning. God has been good to me for a long period of time. And I just give God thanks and praise. And I want to thank Irmo Church for inviting me to come and be a part of your Pathfinder Day. Amen. Um, I'm a Pathfinder at heart. I'm a Master Guide. But I love working in the Master Guide. I, I enjoy going camping. Thank you. I enjoy going camping. I enjoy all of the accolades that what Pathfinders bring to many of us uh, here in in, uh, in God's church. Uh, I always believe this is the avenue for our youth and the young at heart to do the things what God wants us to do as Pathfinders, how we reach out to people and always doing things to help those who can't help themselves. And even those who are sometimes in situations where they can't take care of themselves. Pathfinders, go in and do things for them. Adventurers, bring in a blessing to people in nursing homes and care homes and facilities. So I just get thrilled when they talk about Pathfinders. And so uh, I don't know about you, but God has been good to me all these years. But like I say, I want to thank you all for inviting me and, and my family. And I want to just recognize my family just real quick like, there in the back is my wonderful and loving, gorgeous wife. That's Kathleen. <laughs> and, and along with her is my son, no, son number three. And no, I'm sorry, son number two. <laughs> and his family, my daughter-in-law, Latrice, that's Nicholas Latrice. And then I got all my grandchildren there. There's Montreal, there's Xavion, and there's my, that, that's him. <laughs> Stand up, my grandson. Stand up. Stand up. Keon, I'm going to tell you something. I am so proud of you. Uh, this young man, he finished high school last year. And from what they're telling me, uh, not sure which school he's going to, but he is going, I think, to College of Charleston and going into the ROTC program. But I know that God got something for him and uh, from the school from Columbia High. Uh, he was one of the honorees uh, there at that school that had one of the, the top 5% in grade average there in Columbia High. I'm just so proud of Keon. I'm just so proud of him. And he is a pathfinder. <laughs> and my other grandson, uh, uh, Montreal, he is a pathfinder. I don't know why they're not in uniform. And Xavion is an adventurer. And so uh, I'm just proud of my family, and and when they when they all come in and support me, and that's what God wants. So, if, without further ado, let's let's see if we can get into the word. I uh, I want to I'm gonna ask everyone if we would please stand just one more time, uh, and I'm I'm going to read the uh, verses that my that my friend read a little bit ago, but I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Because I want everybody to really get the flavor of what God has put on my mind and heart to share with you all this morning. And the Bible says in Judges 7, 1 through uh, 3, he says, So Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Harad. The armies of Midian were camped north of them in the valley near the hill of Moriah. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. If I let all of your, you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me, and they say themselves by their own strength. Therefore, tell the people, whoever's timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. 
uh, you all now may be seated. My message this morning coming under the subject is God has a plan for his soldiers. Just pray with me a moment. Father, here I am once again, Lord, before your presence. I give you praise. I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory. Right now, Lord, I just want you to move Kelvin away. Move me back. And Lord, and you step in. You speak to your people this morning on this subject, Lord. And so, Father, we give thanks and praise to you. I ask, Lord, that you would forgive me of my sin, my shortcoming, and all of us, Lord. Because, Father, we're your people. Now, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, we ask. Amen. Amen. God does have a plan for his soldiers. You know, the pathfinders and adventurers, they love to sing that song, I may never march in the infantry. Y'all know that song? I never march. I, I may never march in the infantry. Y'all remember that? And then say, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never soar over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord on me. Yes. Don't y'all remember that? Yes. Oh, I just love to sing that song all the time. And you say, as that song implies that Christianity is like being in the battle. And indeed, the Christianity is often compared to warfare. You see, the, the, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. You see, Paul wrote to Timothy about the prophecy made about him that he might wage the, a good warfare. And, and then he said he will fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6, 12. Now, my question this morning to all of my past fighters, are you soldiers in the Lord's army? As a Christian, you have been called to be a soldier in the Lord's army. Soldiers are called to counter evil and to protect the kingdom of their king. Now, in the pathfinding world, if you are an adventurer, you are, you are what I call a BFT. You say, oh, what, what, what are you talking about, a BFT? A BFT is you are in a basic spiritual training. Amen. Now, 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 if you are a pathfinder or a team leadership training, you're in the PFT. What am I talking about there? You're in the primary spiritual training. And, and if you are a master guide or a master guide in training, you are a AST. And what am I talking about an AST? Advanced spiritual training. Now, I know that you're going through various curriculums and lessons that will prepare you for this ongoing war. And you should try and learn everything being taught to you while going through these trainings. But you see, the Lord is going to use you, and he's going to equip you, and he's, he's going to get you ready for these wars. Now, let me tell you what's going on in the war zone this morning. And this is going on right now. You see, Christianity is in a fight. Yes. Satan is bombarding the Christians with temptation. The Christian is to stand firm against these temptations. The way we overcome Satan is to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, the way we become strong in the Lord is you have to put on the armor of God. We're going to get more in depth in that in a little later in this, in this method. Now, have you ever heard the expression from people, they say, people don't plan to fail, they just fail to plan. You can and I can make any plan we wish to make, but God always has the final say in any plan. Then we learn his plan is for the situation, and we make our plans based on his plan, we find out that God has the best plan all along. Let me give you an example. You know when Peter and the others, they went fishing. They were fishing all day long. And then Peter and them came in, and Peter said, ah, I'm ready to go home. We didn't catch nothing. And then here Jesus comes in, and Jesus tells them to go out, back out in the water, where the water is deep, and they would catch fish. Luke 5, verse 4 to 8. See, Peter's plan was to forget fishing, go home, and relax. But God said, no, go back out there in the deep water. And But when we obey the Lord, 
he found out that God's plan was better. And then when Jesus told his disciples he was going to die, Peter rebuked him. Matthew 16, 21, 23. See, Peter thought he had a good plan. He said, Lord, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. This way we're going to take care of this. But see, but when Jesus went to the cross and he paid for those sins forever, Peter found out that God had the best plan. And then when Goliath saw David coming to meet him for battle, uh, David, he said, David, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to feed your carcass to the scavengers of the field. Second Samuel 17. But when that stone that, that, that David hit him with, and it hit him in the head, Goliath fell to the ground. And when he fell to the ground, that was it. He was dead. And see, I can go on and give you more and more examples of what God's plans are in, in many people's lives, but I want to talk about this one here. I want to introduce to you one of God's soldiers, and he goes by the name of Gideon in the book of Judges. You see, when Gideon and his army went into battle, they must have had a plan. But before that battle was joined and the victory was won, they found out that God had a better plan. So I want to I want to share with you this morning this thought that God has a plan for his soldiers. And I want you to know we are his soldiers. Yeah. Now, the reality of God's plan is this. God's plan is, is a different plan. You see, here it is that Gideon has been called by the Lord to rescue the Israelites from the Midianites. Now, Gideon was not all that enthused about doing this. And he said, he said, Gideon, quote, how can I rescue Israel, especially when my clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh? And the Lord said to Gideon, quote, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as you were fighting against one man, unquote. You know, as a soldier, when God gives you an assignment, you can be sure he is going to equip you for that assignment. Now, see, Gideon planned to march into battle with 32,000 soldiers. But see, God had a different plan. God told Gideon, he said, you got too many. 32,000, that's too many for this battle. <laughs> he said, if I let all you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me as they save themselves by their own strength. God told him to tell the people, whoever's a timid and afraid may leave and go home. So the Bible says, that 22,000 of them left and went home. That was leaving only 10,000. Now, I want you to know that Gideon had to fight 132,000 men he had to fight. And he said, 10,000? We're going to fight these many? 10,000 against 132,000? Lord, what are you saying? Look here. Many a night, however, according to God's plan, 10,000 was still too many. So God spoke to Gideon once again. He told him, he said, look here, Gideon. I want you to understand this. The 10,000 I'm leaving you is still too many. Gideon said, what? What? He said, I want you to do this. He said, God spoke to Gideon. He said, I want you to take 10,000 men down to the water and watch them drink. Divide the men into two groups. In one group, put all those who cut water in their hand and lap it with their tongue like a dog. You lift the water and you drink it that way. And the other group, put all those who kneel on the ground and, and put their mouth down to the water and slurp up the water. And he says, the men that slurp at the cup of the water in their hand, which were a total of 300. And he said, only those 300 is going to fight this war. Amen. Only those 300. All the others got down on their knees and they drank their mouth until their mouth in the stream. And when Gideon looked up, he said, oh Lord, what am I going to do? <laughs> and so, I want you to understand this morning. God's plan is a declared plan. See, here's Gideon. He has, he has seen 32,000 men, his men, all there. And when he looked back, he said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now I just only got 300. He's getting ready to attack a force that is many, many times larger than his own. See, God is not asking him or asking any of us 
to take a leap in the dark. He's asking us for a clear step of faith. See, God knew Gideon's fear and his concern. Now, when it comes to you and me, the Lord expects us to be obedient. And he asks us to be obedient to his will. But he never asks us to take a blind leap in the dark. He always asks his children to respond to his plan by taking them to a clear step of faith. See, God uses many to speak. When God speaks to us, we got to listen to him. So how God going to speak to us? He speaks through his word. Romans 10, 17. He speaks through the Spirit, Acts 13, 2. He speaks through other believers, in Acts 9, 17, 18. He even speaks through the circumstances of life, Genesis 24, 12 to 16. The bottom line is this. God will always direct your feet plainly. He will not leave you in doubt. His plan is a declared plan. And let me tell you something else. God's plan is a distinct plan. See, Gideon's men were to surround the enemy, divide into three groups. A hundred here, a hundred here, and a hundred there. Now, every soldier was given a weapon consisting of, and watch this, their weapon was a trumpet, da -da 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 -da, a clay pot with a torch lamp inside the pot with oil so they can be able to light a torch. They were to sound their trumpet, shout for the battle, and break a little clay pitcher containing an oil lamp. God said this would give them the victory. What? They gonna, we're going to get the victory. And, he's, and we know they did. What a distinct plan. No man would ever have come with a, with a plan like that. No man would come up with any kind of plan like that. I, I got someone here. He's going to work with me this morning. And I'm going to excuse him this morning to go do what he got to do. But let me share a short story with you. Just a real short story. I was in the military for almost 21 years. And back in 1989, in December, there was a, 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 a operation, a military operation, and it was called Operation Just Cause. And what this was, this only lasted for about almost 30 days. It was in December 1989 and rolled over in January 1990. And in this uh, Operation Just Cause, this is where the United States went in and invaded Panama. United States loved Panama. United States does anything they can to help Panama. But Panama had a situation. They had a tyrant. They had a dictator. They had a drug smuggler. And he was their president. And the United States says, we owe it to the Panamanians to come get him, arrest him. And the man was General Manuel Noriega. The military had to say, well, how do we do this? General Colin Powell and them says, how are we going to get them to not destroy Panama? We don't want to blow up buildings. We don't want to kill people. We don't want to do none of that. We want that general in there. So they went to his compound. And they surrounded his compound. And they set up these gigantic speakers all over the place, all around the whole place. And they say, General, come out. He said, no, 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 I will not come out. So they commenced to turn the music on. What was they playing? Heavy metal music. 24-7, day in, day out. He wouldn't give up. He wouldn't give up, and the music kept going, the music kept going, the music kept going, the music kept going. And then finally, he said, no more, no more. And he came out with his hands up, and he was he, he cooperated. They brought him back to the United, United States to be tried. That was something quite unique that all the time I was in the military, how the military would go in and do an invasion. But this, what God done, with 300, 300 men to go in and take out 132,000 plus is, is amazing. You see, had Gideon and his men not been willing to follow God's plan, they would have missed out on God's best for their lives. So it is the, with the plan of God, there are times when God will lead you in direction you never imagined. He can come up with plans for our lives that are so very distinct. Yet, when we go his way, 
we find that God always has the best plan. Amen? Amen. Now, God also has the requirement. The requirement of God's plan is this. If a person or a church is going to walk in God's plan, God gives them everything they're going to need. And there are three steps that they're going to have to follow. And God's plan requires surrender. Think about this. Gideon was a man with 32,000 followers. But by following God's plan, he saw his army reduced, his rank lowered, and his pride crushed. Ultimately, God gave him assurance that Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite, will have victory over Midian and all his allies. But see, what Gideon learned was that this fight was not about Gideon. It wasn't about his army or even his enemy. The battle was about the Lord. You see, Gideon had to come to a place where he was willing to lay his plan, his goal, his dream, and his, his will. All he had to leave it all aside. You can stay right there. All right there. I love it. I love it. This is getting ready to get good. And then the second step. Let me tell you what the second step is. God's plan requires submission. You see, for God's plan to succeed, Gideon and his army had to submit to God's plan. Gideon had to watch when first 22,000 men and then 9,700 men turned and went home, taking their weapons with them. Gideon and the 300 remained and had to walk in obedience to God's plan for the battle of none because none of them, none of them would have had a chance of survival. And you know, if you want to see the Lord's best for your life, then it will require obedience to his plan and on your part. You may not like what, what the Lord is telling you to do, but you do it anyway. The third and final step, God's plan requires commitment. See, if getting in this army was to experience the victory, they would have to humble themselves under God's hand, surrender to his plan, obey his will, and proceed in faith. It took great faith for 300 to go out and fight thousands. It took great faith for them to take no weapons. It took great faith for them to blow their trumpet. It took great faith for them to break those pitches and to shine those lights. But you see, but God answered their faith with giving them a resounding victory. Now, if you're going to see God's plan for your life, it too is going to require faith. God is going to ask you, take some steps along the pathway of life that will be difficult. And you will, you will be, uns be unsure at times, but I tell you this, the path to God's best is always to the path of God's faith. Amen. God has a plan for your life, Pathfinder. He has a plan for you. Don't you think the enemy, Satan, may also have a plan for you too? But see, the enemy wants you to be defeated. He wants you to be unhappy. He wants you to be miserable. But if you choose to walk with, God, with the Lord's plan, you can be confident that it is the plan that will give you and the Lord victory over Satan. I asked you earlier, past family, are you soldiers in the Lord's army? This is what you're needing to do. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 13, you have to put on all the armor of God. Come on up here, my man. Yeah. Come on up here. You got to show them what this is. You got to show them what this is. Yeah, this play, this play what you got. Take your sword out there. Hold it right there. Now, the enemy won't, now, the enemy don't like this. He don't like this. But I'm telling you, if you choose to walk in the Lord's plan, you can be confident that it is the plan that he gives you and nobody can take nothing away from you and you will have victory over Satan. Now, in this, the Bible says in 10, 13, you have to put on all of God's arms so you will be able to stand the firm, the firm against all strategies of the devil. For well, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, enemy, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The Bible says, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. You have to put on the belt of truth. This is the belt of truth. You see what he's wearing here. And the belt of truth protects us against the lies and deception of the enemy. And the breastplate, he got his breastplate on. The breastplate, the body armor of God's righteousness. 
referring to the righteousness purchased up for us by Jesus being on the cross for us. And having your feet, his feet, his, his, his sandals, his feet fitted with the shoes of the gospel of peace. You see, that allows us to be ready to share God with all others. Wherever we go, we can tell people about God. And then he holds up the shield of faith. Hold up that shield, let them see that shield. He's holding up the shield of faith. That's to stop those fiery arrows of the devil. You see, our faith can guard us during trial in the same way shield would do would, would, would help us during battle. Then you have to put on the helmet of salvation. See, to guard our mind from excessive worldly influences and instead think on things that honor Christ. And then you raise up that sword right there. Raise it up so they can see it. That's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Double edge. Double edge. And nothing can be no better. Now see, I want you to know this, Pathfinder. I want you to know that the enemy will try to launch the prize of tax on you with this fiery dog. He will attack your health. He will attack your finances. He'll attack your marriages. He'll attack your children. He'll attack your family. He'll attack your church. He'll attack your business. He'll attack your job. He'll attack your school. Lord have mercy. Your school. Too much shooting is going on in our school. There shouldn't be no weapons there in our school. And then he will attack your friends. Oh, Lord have mercy. That, that's because you have to be a soldier in God's army. You have to put on the whole arm of God. The enemy cannot have any impact on you, and he knows this. So when you wear this, the enemy's going to run. He's going to run. But in conclusion, I can tell you this. It's a beautiful thing to be in God's arm. Having to serve him is not only a pleasure, but it's a privilege and an honor. You see, God if one, if God want to mess with your plan, I say you better let him mess with your plan. Because he's going to keep you straight. He's going to help you through all the things that you have to go through in this life. We're living in the last days. We don't know what's going to come up. Even within the next hour you leave here, we got to trust and put our faith in God and know that he's going to be there for us. He's never going to let us down. Man may let you down, but God is not going to let you down. And so we have to understand that he has the best plan for our living. He has his plan is for you to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. And if you do, then you will be given the whole arm of God. You will be a soldier in the Lord's army. God bless you, church, this morning. And let, and let God's spirit come up on each and every one of us because we need him in these last days. Amen? Amen. And, and give, my, give my demonstrator a hand, would you please? Give my demonstrator a hand. Thank you so much, Steve. And I pray that one day you're going to get one of those uniforms like these guys here. Because just looking at that uniform, I'm going to tell you, they have a program coming up in Gillette, Wyoming, next year. And I tell you, it's going to be big. Yeah. I'm looking at over 90,000 people campers out there. Going to be wearing those same kind of uniform they're wearing today. I would love for you to go and take that experience out there. I would love for you to do that. And in some way, the, the club can grab you in and, and take you in there. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And you're going to meet some old people named Steve. <laughs> so God bless you and thank you. Let us, let us give God praise and let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for this moment, Lord, that you've given to all of us. We pray, Lord, that you will watch over us and protect us, Lord, because we're in your army, Lord. We don't want to be in nobody else's army. We want to be in your army. But, Lord, when we took that step to say, we want Jesus, we got ourselves baptized, we changed our lives, and now, Lord, we're just asking you to keep us, Lord. Watch over us. Reign your spirit on us, Lord. And, Father, and we will go out and tell everyone how much you have done for us how you have taken care of us, Lord. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks and praise. Again, Lord, we ask that you will forgive us of our sins. Anything that is in us that shouldn't be in us, remove it. Please, Lord, remove it. And help us, Lord, to go on your errand. So, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat>